challenge for this skate park now! Today we're actually going to take his proper size skateboard with us. Which I think is the first time we've actually had that at the skate park, isn't it, Jasper? As you might have guessed, the day is more or less over, so this is a bit of a rush job. Jasper, wait for me. Show me what you can do. Right, remember to be careful. Can you turn like this, Jasper? Foot's a bit far forward there, chicken. Oh, you're going up the ramp. One day you'll be able to go all the way up there and do funky turns and come back down again, but probably not today. Jasper? Right, make sure you're not in his way. See, now you can turn it. Now lean forwards like you did last time. Lean, 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 lean. There you go, see? You see? Looks like we've got those trucks about right now. Um, made quite a bit of progress haven't you Jasper? What you need to do now monkey is you need to learn to do kick turns. We're heading home now for supper. Um. Good morning, welcome to the next day. Yes that was my um, my catch up day. And um, what we're going to talk about I think in this vlog post is wheels and wheel sizes. Because I've... Yeah, because I've got these rough stuff wheels I'm supposed to be popping them on my board so that uh, the guys at Slick Revolution can have some stock footage of rough stuff wheels on an evolved board. All pretty straightforward. And also, I did change the wheels on my car and it has had an effect on the way the car feels and handles and there are plus sides and downsides and I think it's probably going to be a similar situation with these. So. I'm going to get my toolkit out. The front wheels are easy, of course. The back wheels are a little bit more tricky because they're the ones that are powered. So what you have to do is replace this big, whatever you call this thing, the big gear here with the little one that comes with the street wheels. So if you don't have the street wheels, you won't be able to put these rough stuff wheels on. In order to change the belt, because you need a new belt as well, you have to release this four pins under this, so this Two bits here, loosen that off, this comes off. Then you can see there's four other bolts that hold the motor and secure it to the belt and gear. So you need to loosen those off so that it'll slide in a bit closer. Then you can pop it all together, push it back so that the belt is, you know, got some tension but isn't like overstressed, is the way I'd like to put it. Sort of half a centimetre deflection when you push it with your finger. Sounds about right. And then tighten those up. Put the new pinion cover on and tighten those two screws there and then you've got it all together like this make sure it all moves fine and then pop that on and just sort of massage it around the place until it goes in which i can't do with one hand now that's done you just pop the spacer and nut back on tighten up and you're good to go you like those wheels yeah, I think they look pretty good. Okay, 
one more thing I forgot to mention is you have to change the wheel settings here. Well, I suppose you don't have to, have to, but I did. So you do that by double pressing that, going to wheel settings, and then you just select with this the appropriate one. I figured putting a larger wheel in rather than a smaller one was probably the best idea. And this controller doesn't yet have the 110, or the 107 I should say, that, that Evolve are going to be doing. So I figured, yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna put it back to the 175-66T. There we go, those are the original wheels. And that's what I've got to put back on now, unfortunately, because I have to return these rough stuff wheels to Slick Revolution. Just a quick word on how to tighten. When you're moving back to the off-road wheels, the all-terrain wheels from Evolve, it can be a bit tricky to get this belt properly tightened. So what I did was put it all together with the motor loose on the four screws, then push the motor until the belt was about as tight as I wanted it, sort of pushing it right to the top here, and then tightened one of the nuts, and sort of maybe the other two a little bit, just to hold the motor in place, then pop the gear and belt off, tighten up all four of them properly, and then pop it all back together. Because the problem is you can't actually reach all the nuts with the gear and belt on, unlike when moving to the street wheels, where you can just. Jasper has unilaterally decided that we're going to visit Gigi and Grandpa tonight. So, as it's half term, that's what we're gonna do. Just before I load everything into the car, this electric bike is like all electric bikes in the UK, limited to 250 watts. There's also a limit on the top speed that you can achieve of 15 and a half miles an hour, which means that the fact that it's got smaller wheels is actually extremely beneficial because it means that it accelerates considerably better than some of the other electrically powered assisted, I should say, bikes with bigger wheels, and it can hit the same sort of top speed without having any kind of an issue, because the top speed is limited. And it's kind of similar with EVs as well, actually. Uh, for example, BMW, with their i3, have gone down the sort of really, really skinny, thin wheels route, because it reduces rolling resistance and enables the cars to go further. Tesla, on the other hand, goes, eh, who cares about that sort of thing? We got a great big battery. And I'm sort of seeing that now with my 21 inch wheels. They're staggered, so they're a bit fatter at the back than they are at the front. They definitely hurt range. My sort of anecdotal guess is you're probably losing as much as, certainly between five and 10%, which is quite a lot really, but, not enough to make me want to go back to the 19s. Then again, we'll see how I feel when it comes time to change the tires, because if the tires don't last a sensible number of miles, I'm definitely gonna have to get rid of them. Uh, where'd I put my lens cap? Aha! Time to go, Jasper, come on. While we're on the subject of EVs and wheels, I mean, what would be nice is if there was some kind of a... Yeah, coming, Jasper. Right, let's get going. I do, he's got these like imaginary friends called Ochis. It's hilarious, really. So anyway, all I was gonna say quickly is it'd be nice if there was some kind of tire puncture. Sit. Yeah. Jasper, why aren't you sitting down in the car, monkey? Where? Yes, you're right, that's a deer. I'm spotted. Yeah, I know, it's not the best food ever, but we're hungry and it's late. Isn't that right, Jazzy? No, that's enough of that. And here we are. Hello, long time no see. I have just remembered something important that I forgot to mention about changing the wheels on the Evolve board. What you wanna do once you've put it all together and you've tried to get the belt tensions right is lift up the back, run it at full speed and then come off the throttle and see which wheel stops first. And whichever wheel that is, basically if the belt tensions aren't identical, one wheel will stop before the other. So you wanna avoid doing that. I spent about 45 minutes making sure the belt tensions were right on those AT wheels. And I got there eventually. It's getting way late, so I'm gonna say goodbye. In terms of punctures and wheels, 
I'm amazed that nobody's been able to invent an unpuncturable tyre yet. I hope you enjoyed today's vlog post. If you have, remember to like it, share it and subscribe if you haven't already and follow me on Instagram if you don't already and I'll see you tomorrow for the next instalment of my daily vlog. Bye. Where are we going now, Jasper? McDonald's. No, we're not going to Art McDonald's. Where are we going? Come on, say it properly, monkey. Say it into the camera. Come on, say it loud into the camera. We are going to the skate park! Not that loud. <laughs>